What's poppin'? It's Mello, back at you with another video, and today we're getting into the part two. The focus today is gonna be on rhythm when it comes to the melody. Be sure to like the video, you know, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you click the bell so you can get notified. Let's get into it. So let's talk about step bass rhythm. So as far as step bass rhythm, it's basically the way the grid is already set up. If you go to the horseshoe and you look at all of these, anything with the even number on the right side of the slash, that's gonna be a step bass grid. You know, that's one fourth step, you go to one fourth beat. You see the grid doesn't change, but when you go to one half beat, the grid does change. The tip that I have for beginners and people who just put notes in awkward spots is to use that one half beat grid by clicking the horseshoe and everything because this way, no matter where you click, it's not gonna be off. I'm gonna show you the awkward spots that people click and stuff like that, like that right there, like. You don't hear that in most music, so it's best to just stick to these type of spots. And if you have issues with that, the easiest way is to go here and click that, which is the one half beat. That way, there's no way that you can mess up. Let's erase that. Let's talk about triplet bass melodies. So. When you put down a horseshoe, anything with a multiple of three, which would be third beat, six beat, third step, one six step, those are triplet bass. So with that, if I click one third beat, you see how the grid has changed? I'm gonna go back. One half beat, you see how the grid is? The difference is when I click one third beat, within a metronome click, there are only gonna be three spots for me to click. But if I go to one half beat, there are only two spots for me to click per metronome click. And just so you know, a metronome click would be this distance. And when we go into one third beat, it creates a different set of possibilities as far as a melody. I'm gonna make a quick melody to show you the difference. See, it creates a whole different possibility of rhythms. These are gonna be the most common rhythms you have when you put it in one third beat. It's gonna be this right here erasing one of those, this right here. So those are gonna be the most common other than landing on a beat and stuff like that. Let's move on to the next thing, which is rest. Rest and silences are a part of most music and they make most melodies interesting. Silence can also help with creating a bounce or a groove for the melody you're making, but this can be accomplished by note length and adjusting the note length. And it's very effective when you're using instruments that have a long sustain, meaning they hold long. It gives you room for counter melodies and things like that, which I'm gonna have another video on that in the future. With that being said, let's take a look at this melody right here. We're gonna shorten some of the notes and see how that sounds. So you hear that, there's more space and it feels like it has a little bit more bounce. So we're gonna compare it very quickly. So with that, that's one example, but let's go to another pattern. Now with this, we have a flute melody. Let's listen to it. Now there's nothing wrong with everything sustaining, but let's try something else. Very simple tip is something that you should incorporate in most of, if not all of your music. Some notes should start and stop and you should just play around with that because that can help you when it comes to creating a bounce. Now we can get to the meat and potatoes of the tutorial, which is gonna be passive melodies and active melodies. We're gonna discuss passive melodies first. A passive melody is a melody with moderate to very little movement rhythm wise meaning there's a lot of space within the melody it's not really busy it's really minimalistic uses very little notes passive melodies are really good for r&b sad music ambient music any type of music with a singer who does good vocal melodies because it gives them space to make their own melody over the beat and it's also good for instruments like pads and things like that this is the melody right here that's what i want you to focus on and just look at how few notes it hits over the chords, it's basically gonna show you what a passive melody is. So let's listen to it.
it gets the point across without using too many notes, without being too busy or anything like that. That's one example of a passive melody. Now, as far as this example, this is a triplet based melody. We've went into one third beat. All the green represents the chords, the red represents the melody. With that, let's play it. When you get to this part right here, you would think, oh, it's, that's a little active maybe. There's so much space in these other parts that it gives room for moments like this. It's about going with what you feel and you judge for yourself if it's a passive melody or not. When you hear the examples of an active melody, you're gonna clearly know the difference. So let's shift over to that. So now let's talk about active melodies. An active melody is the opposite of a passive melody. It's a melody with lots of movement rhythm wise. It's very busy at certain points. It doesn't go too long without a note striking. And you'll see a lot more notes being played than you would see in a passive melody. So this is good for creating excitement in the music. It's good for action packed music. It's good for trap music, up tempo music, dance music, putting bounce in your melodies and all of that good stuff. So let's go over these two examples. These, this is the same chord progression from the first example in the passive melodies, and it's a step based rhythm, active melody. Let's listen to it right now. Much, much different than the first example on the passive melody. Way more notes, way more rhythms. So you can see the difference and the type of vibe that it creates and the type of bounce that it creates. Now we're back in the one third beat and this is another example of an active melody. And again, these are the same chords from the second example on the passive melody. But now we have an active melody over the chords. So let's listen to it. Now it's not super active, but it's active enough. Now this is the thing about both of them. You know, with the passive melody that you heard, is it possible to make it more passive? Absolutely. With a passive melody, if you wanna make the melody more passive, that's fine. But with an active melody, is it possible to make this more active? Yes. Should you? No. You don't want to make a melody that's too active, that has too much action going on. You want to leave some space and you want to do what feels right. I don't really see a problem with trying to make a melody more passive or trying to make the most passive melody that you can, but I would strongly advise against trying to make the most active animated melody that you can. Now, before we go to the last couple of points, this first eight represents the active, this last eight, represents the passive. So let's listen to it. very simple and you can use those two different concepts whenever you think it's appropriate for what you're trying to create. Now for the last thing, I recommend trying to mix it up a little bit. This may be a mixture, but you may look at it as active. So let's listen to it very quickly. When it comes to the rhythm, you know, try mixing it up and things like that. So I'm gonna give you one last tip with this. The pulse of the rhythm is the beat. I'm working in double time, so two metronome clicks would be a beat. So for a good example, we have this right here. Now, that already sounds good and you could lay some drums under it, but let's add a little bit extra to it.
Now you see that created bounce right there. That's a bouncy melody right there. The main thing that I did was make sure something was hitting on each beat. And even if I have a chord hitting under here, I might be able to miss a beat on the melody, but that's just good game for you to know. And the last tip I'm gonna give you, when it comes to triplet based melodies, one of the great things about them is they contrast well with step based drums. This is on a one half beat rhythm and remember, the melody is on one third beat. So let's listen to it. Something real light, you know, low fat, you know, not the craziest, but just had to illustrate a point for you. So that concludes the tutorial. I will be coming with more in the Melody series very soon, and I will be making more tutorials very soon. Let me know what you want to see. Please leave it down in the comments, you know. Also, give me feedback on what you thought about the tutorial. Other than that, I'll see y'all another day, somehow, someway. I'm out.